Welcome to Celtic Tomes, bringing you readings from bygone books. Welcome to Celtic Tomes, bringing you readings by Gary and Ruth from the classic books of Celtic lore and study. The preface to British Goblins. Welsh Folklore, Fairy Mythology, Legends and Traditions by Word Sykes. In all the days of the King Arthur, all was this land fulfilled of fairy. Chaucer Dedicated to His Royal Highness, Albert Edward, Prince of Wales. This account of the fairy mythology and folklore of his principality is by permission dedicated. Preface In the ground it covers, while this volume deals especially with Wales, and still more especially with South Wales, where there appear to have been human dwellers long before North Wales was peopled, it also includes the border counties, notably Monmouthshire, which, though severed from Wales by Act of Parliament, is really very Welsh in all that relates to the past. In Monmouthshire is the decayed cathedral city of Caerleon, where, according to tradition, Arthur was crowned king in 508, and where he set up his most dazzling court, as told in The Mort d'Arteur. In a certain sense, Wales may be spoken of as the cradle of fairy legend. It is not now disputed that from the Welsh were borrowed many of the first subjects of composition in the literature of all the cultivated peoples of Europe. The Arthur of British history and tradition stands to Welshmen in much the same light that Alfred the Great stands to Englishmen. Around this historic or semi-historic Arthur have gathered a throng of shining legends of fabulous sort, with which English readers are more or less familiar. An even grander figure is the Arthur who existed in Welsh mythology before the birth of the warrior king. The mythic Arthur, it is presumed, began his shadowy life in prehistoric ages and grew progressively in mythologic story, absorbing at a certain period the personality of the real Arthur and becoming the type of romantic chivalry. A similar state of things is indicated with regard to the enchanter, Merlin, there was a mythic Merlin before the real Merlin was born, at Carmarthen. With the rich mass of legendary lore to which these figures belong, the present volume is not intended to deal, nor do its pages treat, save in the most casual and passing manner, or of the lineage and original significance of the lowly goblins which are its theme. The questions here involved, and the task of adequately treating them, belong to the comparative mythologist and the critical historian, rather than to the mere literary workman. United States Consulate, Cardiff, August 1879 That was the preface of British Goblins, Welsh Folklore, Fairy Mythology, Legends and Traditions by Wirt Sykes. A link to the full text can be found in the show notes, as well as a full list of the names and words that have appeared in this chapter. You'll find the show notes at celtictomes.libsym.com. That's L-I-B-S-Y-N dot com. If you'd like to leave a comment on this chapter, pop over to our show notes and leave us your feedback. If you've enjoyed this podcast, why not try our sister podcast, The Celtic Myth Pod Show? which brings the stories of ancient Celts to life with narrative and drama, as well as bringing you modern Celtic music, stories and information. Find the Celtic Myth Pod Show in all the places where the best podcasts hang out or on our website at CelticMythPodShow.com. You've been listening to Celtic Tomes, read by Gary and Ruth. Our theme music is Gander in the Pretty Hole by Slauncher and a link to their music can be found in the show notes at celtictones.libsyn.com. This podcast has been produced by The Celtic Myth Show. Music